Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. What would make you an attractive person in the marketplace? So you have the best chance to get the best job, to get the best pay, to have the best opportunity, work with the best people, be welcome at the best tables of learning and enterprise, to sit at the conference table of promise and future. How do you get there? Some things to remember. This first little part I call acceptable and unacceptable behavior. Now, part of our learning affects us in the marketplace. The skills we've developed affects us in the marketplace. You might have had to go to school to work in a certain segment of the marketplace. If you're going to be a doctor, you've got to go to the proper school. If you're going to be a lawyer, you've got to go to the proper school. But there's something else now that affects us all in the marketplace that I want to deal with here. And that's called behavior in the marketplace. Not just your skills, not just your learning, not just what you know, but how you behave. Key phrase, the things that make you obviously a good person, an acceptable person, or unacceptable. First of all, all of us must study our marketplace as to what might be acceptable or unacceptable. But let's cover some of the obvious, and that'll lead to the rest of the list. I've just got three or four here to cover, and then you can think about the rest and ponder those. Here's one thing to remember in the marketplace. You must be ultra-conservative in the marketplace. Ultra-conservative in your behavior because this determines your future. This determines your paycheck. This determines the circles you can get into and the ones you can't get into. I've got some examples here and you'll see where I'm going. Here's number one, your language. The language you use in the marketplace has so much to do with your paycheck. Now, in some areas, that may not be totally true, where you could use bad language and tell dirty stories and cuss all day long, and it wouldn't make any difference. You know, if you're around people that cuss all day long and tell dirty stories, what difference does it make? It doesn't make any difference. But if you would like to exercise your skill and ability in another segment of the marketplace, here's one thing you might have to correct, or you might have to at least watch carefully, and that's your language in the marketplace. So jot this down. Be ultra-conservative in your language in the marketplace. Otherwise, you may destroy parts of the market that would gladly accept you and your product and your service if your language wasn't so unacceptable. The guy says, well, I'll tell dirty stories and cuss wherever I please, and I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying it'll cost you. In some areas of business in the marketplace, it's going to cost you. Here's a guy that makes 100000 a year, could make 250000 easy. The other 150,000 disappears because of his bad language in the marketplace. He's unacceptable in some circles. They won't listen to his story, even though he has something good to share. So you see where I'm going here? Language in the marketplace. Here's what's the safest. Save your jokes for the bar or the pub. Don't put them on the marketplace. Or the inner circle, you know, where all the stories and stuff may be acceptable as you trade stories. But in the marketplace, you've got to be ultra-conservative, shift gears if you have a problem, shift gears, especially in the marketplace, and make sure that it isn't costing you a big share of your marketplace unduly. Because there's no use suffering an extra $100,000, $200,000 a year income simply because you're careless with your language in the marketplace. So of all the places not to be careless, it's in the marketplace concerning your language. So do you see where I'm going here? Next is habits. You just got to be careful of those. Smoking. Guy walks into an office and says, where's your ashtrays? How come you don't have any ashtrays? Well, ashtrays probably mean what? No ashtrays mean. Right? They don't smoke here. Say, oh, yeah, I forgot. So what I'm saying now, I'm not saying right or wrong to smoke. I'm just saying be careful in the marketplace that you aren't disturbing and wiping out and closing the door on a market you could enjoy simply because you're a bit careless about your habits. Habits. Now, I don't smoke, so I don't have this challenge for me, except a fine cigar after a unique meal. Some places around the world still know how to prepare a gentleman's cigar. It's kind of an interesting experience, mostly for show. 
as long as you know which end to dip in the brandy, right? But you see where I'm going here now on habits, habits. Zig Ziglar talked about the man who was late, who was late. I'm telling you, there's some circles, if you're late, you're not welcome anymore. You say, well, I've been late all my life. You know, if people don't like that, that's too bad. I'm saying that's okay. You can have that attitude if you want to. But what if it cost you $100,000 a year? Wouldn't you reconsider? That's too much to pay for the luxury of some habit that you could easily correct and maybe enjoy the benefits of a marketplace that's been closed up until now. This is all I'm saying. Take a look at your habits. Take a look at your language. Here's another one, your dress. Now, sometimes dress changes regionally. In San Francisco on a business day, they wouldn't expect you to look like West Palm Beach. If you dress like West Palm Beach on a business day in San Francisco, somebody will, they'll treat you casual, right? Not appropriate dress. So part of this is company, part of it is region, part of it is locality, part of it is community. What's acceptable in the marketplace on a conservative basis, what would be acceptable to everyone in San Francisco to be dressed conservatively? In West Palm Beach, you can have a casual business dress, perfectly acceptable. The key is to find out so that you don't cost yourself market that you could enjoy. You don't cost yourself customers that you could have. You don't cost yourself people that would gladly join and be part of it except for these difficulties. I had to learn some of this stuff. All of us have to learn the social graces and what's acceptable. The white socks don't go with the black tuxedo. I mean, some things you just have to learn. What if a guy called on farmers in his tuxedo? See, the word would spread. You should see this clown. So now that's the severe side, but here's what I'm asking you. Check your dress. Check your clothes, check your attitude, check your behavior, check your language, check your habits, especially in the marketplace where you get paid. No use slamming the doors you don't need to slam. No use shutting off opportunity that you don't need to shut off by not considering some of these things, okay? One more I found important. Make your employer your employer, not your banker. I wondered why a few opportunities I lost, because I too quickly I asked for a raise. I'd only been there a month, and I said, could I have an advance? An employer says, wow, I thought we hired the right guy, but this guy needs extra money already. Can't manage his affairs, has to have an advance. So here's what I, don't make your employer your banker. Make your banker your banker. If you need a little extra money, go to your bank, go somewhere, but not to your employer. Here's why. An employer is like opportunity. An opportunity doesn't want to see your need. Opportunity wants to see your seed. So let employer be employer. Let banker be banker. Let friend be friend. I found it was a bit unwise to make a friend a banker or a relative a banker. Do you know why you go to a minister to discuss certain things? So that he won't disclose it to the marketplace. And you go to your doctor to disclose it so he won't disclose how weak and sickly you might be. So you don't bring your weekly, your sickness to the marketplace and talk about it. You talk that over with your doctor. Talk over your maladies and your problems to your doctor. So jot this down. It's called show your seed and hide your need in the marketplace especially. Show your seeds, show your willingness, show your desire, show your hard work, show your work ethic, show your arrive early, stay late attitude. Show that, but not your need. The marketplace is not interested in your need. Next is code of conduct. It's not a bad idea to take a piece of paper someday and just jot down what is your code of conduct. What do you expect from yourself? Some things you will do, some things you will not do. Jot this phrase down. What I want to be known for. 
Here's what I want to be known for. And that's not a bad list to make. As we're building our reputation day by day, week by week, month by month, and one opportunity leads to the next, leads to the next, depend on what, depending on what we're known for. These are some of the things that may not appear in your resume. You know, you've been to school and you learned these skills and you worked for this company and you were there nine years and so on. In addition to that now, what's really important, especially for your own psyche, is to make a list of what you would like to be known for. I wanted to be known for always doing my best. I never wanted anyone to be disappointed, at least in my presentation. They might be disappointed with my ideas because they thought I was wrong. They might be disappointed with my position because they thought it wasn't right. And they might be, you know, disappointed because, you know, I didn't say what I believed, you know, was contrary to what they believed. They might have been disappointed in that, but they were never disappointed in my sincerity, never disappointed in my ability to speak from my heart and my soul. If you have charge of some of my life and you send me off to another country, I promise to represent you grandly. I promise you won't have to stay awake nights wondering about Jim Rohn if you've sent him to Paris. I want you to be able to say, forget about Paris, Jim Rohn is there. He'll take care of it in the best style. He won't show up late and he won't show up drunk. He will represent us well. So have you got that good question now? What do I want to be known for? I want to be known for being on time. I want to be known for staying late. I want to be known for not ignoring anyone. I want to be known for my unique ability in conversation as well as presentation. I want to be known for the fact that I care for kids as well as adults. I want to be known for the company's interest as well as my own. I want to be known for one who helps to feed the goose that lays the golden eggs. I want to be known. I want to be known for my leadership skill. I want to be known for my attitude. I want to be known. What would that list be if you were to make it? Here's what I want to be known for. Sometime in the privacy of your own thoughts, away somewhere, just work on that list. Here's the reputation I want to build. Now, here's what's next under personal development. Under personal development, develop these five abilities. First of all is the ability to absorb. One of the big challenges for being here now, especially for three full days, some of you, it's going to be a challenge to try to get it all. But I'm asking you to do that. In another seminar I do, here's a little phrase I have. For the future, pay attention. See if you can't get everything. Every word possible, every idea possible. It's easy to let your mind wander. Right? And not really concentrate and, zig and dig in and make these days extraordinarily valuable for you. Absorb the atmosphere. Absorb the drama of the occasion. Absorb the spirit of the occasion. Absorb the reasons for coming here and then the reasons for going back home and making a difference. Absorb the variety of voices you're going to hear this weekend and absorb the provocative ideas as well as the ones that you agree with absorb all of that take it all in by listening intently taking good notes talking with each other here's one more absorb the drama of each other you're gonna have a chance to meet some excellent people here okay. losers don't pay this kind of money to come to seminars the reason why the price tag is substantial is because when you get here, you'll have an excellent chance of meeting some pretty good folks. Even if they borrowed the money to get here. At least they knew how to do that. Whatever it takes. So don't go away without meeting some people. Here's the next part. Listen to the testimonials. You may pick up some ideas from someone's testimonial that will be just as valuable as what I share from this podium. And sometimes a, a word spoken in private from someone's unique testimonial is so powerful. 
It's just as powerful as all the words given by the presenter. So take that all home. Key, absorb the chance for a new beginning. I don't know where you are at the moment. This is sort of mid-year. First six months, getting ready now for the last six months. And as you pause mid-year to contemplate the past and think about the future, as you ponder for a while ideas that you've already heard, anticipating that you're going to hear some more, how could that create for you a new beginning? There's so many ways to create a new beginning if you just think about it. Or think about the automatic ways of creating a new beginning. Here's a pretty good list. At the beginning of the day, this is a brand new day. I love to get up early now. I used to stay up so late. I got up late. I used to say if the good Lord wanted you to see the sunrise, he'd have made it later in the morning. But, but now I don't do that anymore. I try to get to bed as early as I can. Sometimes it's not easy, especially when you travel and with jet lag and all the rest, you know, around the world. But I try to get up now early in the morning. Unique thing about early in the morning, you haven't messed up the day yet. I mean, it's just, it's just there. It's ready, fresh. It's like being born again. A new day is like being born again. A chance for a new day, a new life. You've never lived this day before. Only in your mind developing plans, but you've never actually walked into this day before. Now you have a chance to watch the sun come up and then stride into this new day. Call yourself a new person, whatever that little trick you have to learn. This is a new day for me. This is a new life for me. Next, at the beginning of the week. You know, that seventh day, I think, has more than one purpose, the seventh day. So just make the note, how to best use the seventh day. It says, what, six days of labor, working miracles, turning thoughts and faith into reality... Then after six days of miracle working, turning ideas into reality, now it says, take the seventh day. And yes, the seventh day could be for spirituality. Yes, the seventh day is to contemplate God. Yes, the seventh day could be called for worship. Yes, the seventh day is to take some time off. Yes, the seventh day is to be with your family. Yes, the seventh day is change of pace. But here's a good idea for the seventh day. To go back over the last six and get ready for the next six. You just pause that seventh day. Because I have a, another little piece on that in this list of five. And maybe now mid-year, mid-year having come here for this weekend, mid-year, you can think of ways to gather up what's happened to you since the first of the year till now. The drama, the disappointments, the highs and the lows and the mixture and the stock market and whatever's happened to you, you know, these six months and say, I'm going to go home and create a new beginning. I'm not going to be the same again after this weekend. You can conclude that and I promise you, the days can be so extraordinary, you won't be able to believe it. So absorb everything. Take it all in. Don't miss anything. The sound, the music, the sights, the atmosphere. My friend Bill Bailey has this extraordinary gift. He doesn't miss anything. Better for him to go to Acapulco, come back and tell you about it, than it is to go yourself. <laughs> and the reason is, if he goes, he won't miss anything. He'll soak up every detail, every person he met, the food and the aromas and the sights and the sounds and the colors and the people and the countryside. Then he has the gift of language. When he comes back home, he can tell it to you. When he talks, you can feel the water lapping on your feet. You can smell the aroma of the food. You can see the colors and the people. Two gifts, to get it. Second gift, to share it. And put it in dynamic words, leaving out no detail. Because here's the key to remember. The drama is in the detail. Lady tells me I've lost 60 pounds. I said, well, is that it? Is that the end of the story? She said, oh, no. Oh, no. There's a lot more to the story than that. And I said, well, I appreciate the number, but give me the details. What was going on in your life before? She says, well, misery you can't believe. I know I missed three good jobs just because I had too many pounds. 
And I says, how do you feel now? And she starts to cry. Wow, that's what I want to hear. The details, the drama is in the details. Give me the numbers, yes, but what does this number mean? For some people, the number means everything before and after. The number means so much drama you can't believe before and after. Before the day and after the day. Give me the details. Absorb, take it in, don't miss anything. Hey there, welcome to my channel Future Inspirational. Today I speak, don't ever forget. Still know a gentleman giggler, it's kind mostly for show. Change habits and change habits long as you long brandy right. Um, brandy right, change habits. But you see where know how habits, know how habits, know how jig, jiggler led who was led. Who I am telling you, there's uh, you are late. Welcome anymore. You say, Well, I have you know, people don't like that saying, and that's okay. Have that attitude, but what if you hundred thousand dollars would not you and uh, would not you change? That's too much pay for the luxury of some habit could easily correct and uh, benefits of marketplace closed up there's a look at your habits take a look at your habits and uh, here's another one you dress now sometimes dress change recently francisco a business would not palm beach like west palm beach a dress like west palm on business day in send somebody to a casual right not appreciate dress so part of this company part of a region part of its locality part of this community what's acceptable in the marketplace on consultative basis acceptable to everyone in francisco and uh, to be dressed consultatively in west palm you can have a casual dress perfectly the key to is find out yourself marketplace that you could enjoy you don't cost yourself customers you don't cost yourself gladly join me except for these difficulties i had to of have to learn local and acceptable and acceptable